Good day, everybody. Meteorologist Mark Muller here. Guess what we're looking at here? The tropics. Yep, we have continuing to have Celia here in the eastern Pacific. Will we have something form next week in the Atlantic? Well, it's a long shot, but we do have a few things to watch. They are pretty far south. In fact, a lot of you are probably going to be wondering, can these actually develop because they're actually so far south? But we'll get into that, and we'll get into all the details, see if there's any severe weather upcoming as well, and what's going on with these heat waves. Let's take a look. And if the tropics weren't enough, take a look what's going on here across the mid-Atlantic and the northeast. What is this big old mess, and is this looking like more like a tropical system here off the U.S. East Coast for your Thursday and Friday. Look at that. An explosive thunderstorm development really is going to take hold across the northern plains over the next 24 to 48 hours into the weekend. Let's take a look. All right, so take a look at Celia here. Tropical Storm Celia will likely become a hurricane sometime around Friday into Saturday here where we could zoom up to 90 85 to 90 mile per hour winds you can see here. So this system will be on a track towards the northwest here. And you can see by Saturday and Sunday it will be getting into cooler water. So guess what that means? The system will be weakening. And we don't have anything at the moment behind Celia, but we will come next week. All right, so the interesting thing we have to look for in the Atlantic here is, yeah, keep in mind this is pretty far to the south. It's not even an invest system as of yet. It's not even on the National Hurricane Center's you know, long-range radar here. But going through June 28th to 30th, this is this Cape Verde low that's exited that's pretty vigorous, even for being that far south. As it approaches the Lesser Antilles, the Windward Leeward Islands here into the Southern Caribbean. Yeah, that's where we're going to have to watch June 28th through 30th the next week. Both the GFS and the Euro models are picking up on something potentially developing here. Um, we'll see how that goes because, you know, it, it is fighting the fact that it's so far to the south. It's hard to get a spin up, but it has happened before. And then there's another area that we're watching off the east coast here uh, later next week as well. You, we, you get these stalled out frontal boundaries and all these upper level lows pinwheeling around the trough. And sometimes you can get a spin up of some sort of tropical system. Let's take a look at the models. All right, taking a look at the tropics here, the entire tropics, there is that system that's just come off the Cape Verde. It is way to the south here. So at this point, you know, if this system, as it does traverse across, once it gets above the 10 degree line here, we could eventually see this system develop possibly into something here. We'll take a look and see. Um, it is interesting to note we have these upper-level lows continuing off the East Coast. Those we have to watch this time of year, too. They can develop into systems sometimes. Um, there's another tropical wave, but I'm not so much concerned about this one as I am this one, especially if this one somehow manages to hold together. All right, so here is that system. It's looking pretty concentric here on the satellite picture that's just come off the Cape Verde. And look at this. There is another big, massive blob coming off the African coast here. So the ITCZ is really lighting up. It's interesting to note that this one is a bit further to the north here. So we'll have to watch this. They are both very close together. So the Cape Verde system pattern here in the intertropical convergence zone is really heating up. All right, the big view of the tropics here. Take a look. There's Cilia almost off your screen here. Here's another low down in the Southern Caribbean. Not so certain that's going to develop into anything. But look at here's a low that bears watching. You know, the, these kind of lows this time of year that just moved here off the uh, southeast coast here earlier to the mid part of Thursday morning. So you got this big old high sitting out here. And look at this intertropical convergence zone. Even though it's so far to the south, it is very active. So we just had that big wave here come off the coast. You can see it literally right in this area. A lot of you are saying, you know, it's way, way too far south to develop into anything, you know. This is, so let's take a look and see if this does have a chance of making it uh, farther to the north where it can actually develop. And as you can see here, this is Sunday, uh, June 26 here. Big old high. This is really helping stir things up, make this Atlantic much, much warmer here. Um, so this is still pretty far to the south, but here it is. You can see it. Pretty disturbed area of weather. Here's another system here in the eastern Pacific. These are not going to be big hurricanes, though, because, you know, we just keep having one right after another. 
Um, so it's just not going to happen that we see, you know, any big hurricanes. But here we go. Take a look at this. This is still pretty far to the south, so I'm a bit skeptical. This is heading into Monday, June 27th here. So we got a system that's showing up here on the GFS, and the Euro has been kind of picking up on this every so often as well. And see how it heads to the northwest here towards the southern Caribbean. So we have this area of disturbed weather. We'll have to keep an eye on it. Sometimes things like this can develop out of this, but, you know, we'll we'll see. Because, you know, as many of you said, you're right. It is pretty far to the south. But, stranger things have happened. So we'll keep an eye on it here. Not overly confident that anything's going to come out of this, but it is interesting to watch because as this intertropical convergence zone, zone slowly comes to the north over time into July and August, it's going to be a lot more interesting. And of course, you know, the big show here is in the Eastern Pacific where we continue to see these systems. But like I said, they're stirring up so much cool water that at this point of the game, we're not going to see anything major come out of this. Meanwhile, the Gulf and here into the Atlantic, these areas are going to continue to get warm because we don't have any systems developing over them to stir up the water. All right, so here's the sea surface temperature anomalies. This is not a surprise at all. Look at this. This is very cool water temperatures. This is why Celia's had a really hard time, uh, you know, strengthening. It will get to a hurricane, but mostly a minimal hurricane. We've had so many systems over here that it's stirred up all the water. Now, and the same here in the Caribbean, but look at this. We haven't had anything in the Gulf of Mexico. Look at this. Right around Louisiana, this is a disaster waiting to happen here. And if we get right out into the regular part of the Atlantic here, look at this. We have a lot of uh, heat building off the coast here as well. And if we take a look at the rest of the Atlantic here, yes, things are running more than average here when it comes to sea surface temperatures. We're even building here off the coast of South America, which will eventually get into the intertropical convergence zone as that heads north. Uh, throughout the season here and right off the Cape Verdes we're already getting pockets of very warm water and look at this we got warm water all the way up the east coast here you might want to watch southeast Canada here and eastern New England this season as well look at that and one thing to note many of you have posted in the comments down below in my videos you are concerned that you know we haven't seen many systems and this will help just build these sea surface temperatures even faster and that is true we might be setting ourselves up here for an August September which is quite a memorable one to be had all right I wanted to show you that one tropical wave here here is that vorticity cyclonic vorticity uh, take a look this is right around June 27th so next week watch as I put this into motion here so it seems to want to bring this cyclonically pretty good there there's another system that's forming there in the Eastern Pacific. So you, you got a pretty strong system down here. You start to get into these oranges and reds. So right along the northern coast of South America, we could have a potential system here. Now look at that. See how it continues here? It's looking pretty cyclonic, which is what you want to see for development. But watch what happens to this. Here it is in the Southern Caribbean, continuing pretty far to the south for any system development. But... We can. It is possible to get system. Now, look what, look what starts happening here. It's approaching the eastern Pacific here. It's getting ready to cross over Central America. This is Friday, July 1st, so take this with a grain of salt. A lot can change between now and then. But look how it crosses over, and it might form another letter name storm here in the eastern Pacific. Thank you, Tropical Tidbits, for this wonderful satellite feed of Celia. Celia continues to, you know, go through these cycles. You can see earlier in the day it was much more pronounced. Now, you know, you kind of see some almost what could be some, like, dry air or possible wind shear over it. And it is encountering cooler waters, too. But I think this thing will slowly intensify in time here and will achieve that hurricane status here by the weekend. As you can see here on the water vapor loop, you can see some of this dry air here on the east side. So it is having a little bit of a hard time here. But in time, I think things will, you know, start to fan out with this system a little bit more towards the northeast. And eventually we'll get this inflow and outflow looking a lot better. All right. So NAM three kilometer here take a look at this as we head on through the night into the northeast Wednesday night into Thursday morning we'll be stuck with this nearly stationary band of showers and thunderstorms that progresses right around Binghamton to Scranton up to Saranac Lake New York now watch this as we head throughout the night take a look at this this is right around 3 a.m. 
Look at this. So we got this band continuing from Scranton, Utica, starting to move east of Binghamton by this point up into the Adirondacks. And then as we get through the night here towards 5 a.m., look at this. So, yeah, we get this progression slowly to the east. We're going to get some beneficial rains here. Take a look. This is uh, going to be extending pretty far to the south, and this down here is where that low-pressure system that where all this uh, moisture is actually coming from. Lots of problems up here in Montreal, parts of southeastern Quebec as well. But let's continue to put this into motion, shall we? We get towards uh, 7 a.m. here as you're waking up. Take a look at this. So we start to get into the Catskills, Poconos, just north of the Capital District in upstate New York. And watch this as we head towards 9 a.m. We finally start to progress this line into parts of the Catskills, Poconos, uh, the southern Adirondacks here. So we'll start to get some shower and thunderstorm activity here. Uh, mo none of these will be severe, which is good. It's just going to bring some beneficial rains through. And as we head towards 11 a.m. on Thursday morning, here we go. Very slowly getting into western New Jersey here and into eastern New York. So look at severe weather here. Yep, we're dealing with it here on your day on Thursday across the southern Nebraska and northern part of Kansas. And another area up here in the northern plains, uh, Minnesota into the Dakotas and another area in Montana here and another marginal threat here around just west of Salt Lake City here. So if we head into Friday, what is to behold here. It's a marginal threat up here. Still want to keep an eye out even in these darker green areas. Dakotas, Minnesota, down to Iowa. Watch out. All right, so what's going on here? So the rest of Thursday evening here, let's back up just a frame here. There it is. We're dealing with showers and thunderstorms to the northeast of this low across the Carolinas. So we're going to continue to have this moisture feed in and Continued problems. It's going to turn more into a heavy rain event. And look at that. That spreads to the east, east of the I-81 corridor as we head through midnight. And then look at that. The early morning hours of Thursday, we pull this band of rain through the Hudson Valley, eastern Catskills, into southeastern Canada here um, is after sunrise. And look at that. You have to watch these kind of lows this time of year. See this right out here into the... Uh, just west of Bermuda here. We're dealing with a low pressure system and they can form into something tropical, you know, if they persist this time of year. Then we have high pressure building in for the east here. We have this next low ejecting out into the plains as we get this troughiness developing. And take a look at this. Yeah, we're dealing with that strong to severe thunderstorms into Saturday here across the northern plains. High pressure continuing here. So yeah, we're dealing with quite an active pattern continuing here. This is more reminiscent of early spring rather than late spring. But we do have the double high feature going on here. This is a dirty high though. Look at that. Some showers and thunderstorms developing here in the southeast for your Sunday. And as we continue in time, look at this. We get another low pressure developing here. It's interesting to see. You know, we have areas of showers and thunderstorms. It's like it's feeding into this here. Next low pressure trying to form here. And eastern Colorado maybe trying to form a some sort of system there. But look at this. This is persistent. You know, you get some of these showers and thunderstorms in an area of low pressure. Um, you have to watch it this time of year, especially with those high sea surface temperatures. Next front is moving through here. You can see some showers and thunderstorms. Might have to watch out for some gusty thunderstorms real early Monday morning here. And those kind of move out and fizzle as they move towards New York, Pennsylvania, and New England here. They strengthen as we head towards just after noon. You see this band of showers and thunderstorms strengthening, so we might have to watch out for damaging wind, maybe some flash flooding threat as well as this continues to the southeast. You can see high pressure building in um, as we continue through Wednesday, June 29th there, and there it is. So heat wave is on. Look at this from the Dakotas to the deep south. 90s and 100s. Look at these hundreds building out west here into California for your Thursday into the southeast. It is going to feel, look at that, 97 up there in South Dakota. This is crazy. As we head into your, let's take a look here, Friday, TGIF. This is going to be hot as firecracker here. Look at this. We're starting to spread the 80s and 90s to the northeast here as well. But look at this. Look at this area of 100s. Look at this area of 100s out west too. We're just building the heat here. And take a look at Saturday. Yeah. As we see, you can see the trough ridge axis here, obviously, on the temperature pattern. We have 70s blasting down. Nice cool relief up here in the northern plains. But guess what this means? 
That means this area of heat is going to plow into the northeast. We'll be seeing highs approaching in the lower 90s here. Hundreds spreading to the northeast here. This is crazy. And look at out west here. You're getting 90s up into parts of Seattle, down to Portland. Crazy stuff. All right, so here we go. We're going to start off with the medium range model. We're going to get through the rest of June here. And look what we got building in for next week. There's that ridge with those big 90s heading on into the northeast. You guessed it. That's what we're going to see. And look at this. As we head throughout time, we get into towards the latter part of next week. We start towards July 1st. Look at this. We're still ridging here into parts of the northeast. Trough here across the northern plains has been the rule, and we got some ridging out west here. So as we continue deeper into July, what's going on here? This is a big old low pressure system, upper low across northeast North America. And we got blocking starting to go up here in Greenland, and you know what that means. Once again, this doesn't this does not resemble a summer-like pattern. This is more of early spring. It's Feeling like summer here across parts of the southern plains and southeast, but look at this as we head on into July. This this is a big old yuck. This is by Saturday, J uh, July 9th. Look at this. What is this? This is uh, this is not really July weather that you'd see, and things are definitely going to remain cool. Look at this, both coasts. You got big old troughs here. So as we continue through the month of July. We finally start to get some ridging, but look what's going on out west here. Wow. Is that going to be like a big damper to your summer? It looks like it could, at least through July here. And look at this big warming back east. So at least back east, you'll start to see some relief until you get a few more of these troughs. Now keep in mind, you know, troughs this time of year, it's going to keep you from getting into the 90s. So you're not going to like be held down with clouds, rain, and 60 or 50. It's going to be more like 70, 75 in some of these areas, so it's not going to be the end of the world, but it's not going to be like the swimming weather that you hope for. And look at this. By Sunday, July 24th, take it with a grain of salt. Most of the, the you know, look at that. Most of the country is dominated by cooler, you know, than average temperatures here. You got troughs, not big troughs, but troughiness. Extended outlook for my Upper Susquehanna River Valley viewers from Binghamton to Scranton. Guess what's going on here? Yep, we will have that cooling effect from the marine layer eastward uh, during the day on Thursday. So we'll struggle to reach 70 degrees. There will be some showers and maybe a thunderstorm, particularly before 10 a.m., maybe up to a tenth to quarter of an inch. But that'll clear out later in the day. We'll manage to make it up to 70. But look at this. By Friday into Saturday. Friday we get it up into the 80s. Drying conditions into Saturday. We are hot as a firecracker, getting into the low 90s on Saturday and mid 90s on Sunday. And we have that chance of those showers and thunderstorms Sunday night into Monday. We clear it out and look at that. Temperatures cooling down into the 70s. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern and Hurricane Eastern. Guess what? Go over to my Facebook pages, Mediomark. Also, Weather Northeastern. Also, Hurricane Northeastern, if you want to follow just tropical weather. Also, my localized weather from Binghamton to Scranton's Upper Susquehanna River Valley from Binghamton to Scranton. Always at Susquehanna Weather on Facebook. Also on Twitter at Weather Eastern. Mediamark.com, WeatherNortheastern.com. Don't, don't forget to leave a question or comment down below. I love to read your questions or comments. Let's get the weather conversation going. And my Hurricane 2022 outlook is in the link in the description down below. 